Hello, my name is Rickard, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you the difference between place embedded and place linked in Photoshop. If you do want to follow along, I have included a link in the description of this video with the sample files that I use. So go ahead, download those, and then let's dive into Photoshop. All right, so here I am in Photoshop. I've created this little diagram to better explain it. Um, if you go up to file, you'll see that there's a place embedded and a place linked. And place embedded, when you place another file into your Photoshop parent file, that file will be actually embedded inside of your parent file. And the icon next to the layer will look like this. Now the alternate to that is place linked. Now when you place linked rather than place embedded, what it's doing is it's creating a pixel preview of your linked file inside of your parent file and then creating a dynamic link to your linked file. Now those two files will always be separate and the icon next to your layer will look like a little link chain. So in this scenario, if your uh, place embedded version of your parent file might end up being 10 megabytes in your place linked scenario this may end up being 5 megabytes and then you have a separate file that's also 5 megabytes so reasons why you might use place linked as opposed to place embedded let's go ahead and open up in the assets folder this sample linked file so here you can see I have kind of a layout and let's say I want to represent a logo design and I've created this mock-up. So here you can see uh, based on the little icon that's on these layers, these are all linked. So I'm going to select this Nucle logo here and go right mouse click and here I can relink to file. And now I can select a different logo. So let's go ahead and select this drop logo PNG place. And now you can see all of the logos in my file have been updated. I'm going to go ahead and do command Z just so you can see me switch between the two. And then I'll do command shift Z. And you can see because these are linked, I can update all of them with a single shot. Now I will mention here that you can actually do this with an embedded file too. So this functionality is not limited to linked files. You can also do it with embedded files. I'm going to go ahead and open this sample embedded file. And here you can see we've got a different logo and you can also see that the little icon on these layers is the embedded icon versus the linked icon. However, if I right mouse click, drag down to here, I still have the option to relink to file. So let's go ahead, relink to file, and I'm gonna select the Nucle logo, place it, and now you can see all of these have changed to the link logo. And that's because these all now are linked. So really the only difference between these two is if you want your linked file to be separate or to be embedded in your parent file. Now the only thing, the only scenario where I can think that you would want a linked file instead of embedded file might be for space saving issues. So for example, you may have 20 different linked files all feeding into your um, parent PSD and your file size might balloon if each of these are embedded in your document. In that case, so for example, you might be doing a contact sheet of all the uh, composites that you did in the last year. Well, in that case, you would obviously want to use linked because trying to embed a whole bunch of really large PSD files is going to create a really, really large file. So that would be one scenario. Another scenario might be if you have two people working on a project, one person working on the logo, another person working on the mock-up, and you want to have the independence of giving two people separate files 
them working on it, and then just linking them, linking them up at the end. So those are scenarios where you might want to use linked. I would say that using linked versus embedded is always going to come down to a workflow, meaning you have a workflow where you want those files separated, the linked file versus the parent file, or a file saving issue, meaning you don't want your parent file uh, to balloon in size. And that might be a scenario where you would use links instead of embedded. Having said all that, in most cases, you're going to be using embedded because you don't want a scenario where you open a file and no longer have the link. So let's go to file open and you're going to see this sample link broken. So I'm going to go ahead and open that and right away you can see it can no longer find this file and that might be a problem if you want to resize or change anything now if you looked at that diagram you'll notice that the diagram does say there is a pixel preview so if i hit ok this file looks totally fine the problem comes in when you might try to resize it so let's go ahead and select this element here and I'm going to try to transform it to make it bigger. So I'm going to do Command-T, and you can see it doesn't allow me to do that. But what I can do is right mouse click. Let's say I didn't have this link. I can right mouse click, say rasterize layer. Now it's just pixel information, and I can transform it and make it bigger. But as I make it bigger, you can see that we are restricted to whatever pixel size it was when I opened this file. And you can see here we're uh, losing a lot of image quality. It's degrading very quickly. I'm going to hit Escape. And here's that same scenario. In this case, uh, let's go back in our history to when I opened it. The, this same logo that's in our link broken is in our embedded file, but it's embedded rather than linked. So now if I select this, and do a transform, you can see it has no problem with me transforming it. And if I make it significantly bigger, you can see that it's retaining the resolution of my original file rather than the resolution of the pixel preview. So here you can see just for comparison, that's the quality that I get versus when I don't have the link, meaning it's broken, this is the pixel quality that I get. So quite a big difference there. In this case, I would have been way better off having the embedded um, option when I placed rather than using the linked. So those are the primary differences. Hopefully that gives you a good idea of when you would use which. I will say again, most scenarios you're going to want to use the embedded versus the linked. Um, the few cases where you're going to want to use linked instead of embedded is if you have a lot of files that you need to represent in one parent file, such as a contact sheet, um, and you don't want your file size to balloon, or if you have a workflow where more, multiple people are working on a project at once and you want to separate that relationship or those files between the various people working on a project. Okay, one last little tip I'm going to show you here. Uh, let's go to our sample link file here. And that's when you drag a document into your Photoshop file as opposed to using the file place command. So let's go ahead and open our finder. And you can see I have a couple files here. I'm just going to go ahead and drag this in here and right away it uh, opens as a transform. You can actually change this behavior. I'm going to go ahead and hit escape here and go to my preferences general and I'm going to turn off this or actually turn this on. Skip transform when placing. Hit OK. Let's go back to our finder and drag this logo in here. You can see right away it just placed it. And you'll notice that the logo here is the embed logo. So the default behavior when you drag a file into your parent PSD file is it will embed it. 
Now, what if I want to link it? Well, the simplicity is as you drag it in here, hold down the option key and it will link instead of embed. So that's a little trick for you there if you prefer the link workflow. And hopefully that also uh, gives you an explanation for what the difference is between place embedded and place linked. Now, if you enjoyed this tutorial, please subscribe to my channel, leave a like, leave a comment, share this video, turn on your notifications. I will mention here that this is a tutorial that was requested by one of my students in the Nuclei Academy. Now, if you're interested in accelerating your Photoshop training, check out nuclei.com slash academy. I will include a link to it, but that is my full Photoshop training solution and it comes with hundreds of hours of professional training as well as more than 2600 individual assets that you can use inside of photoshop these this is my library of assets presets overlays and so forth that i use in my own compositing as a professional graphic designer and photoshop artist so check that out otherwise here's some other tutorials that you can check out and i'll see you next time